YouTube, what's going on? Brian Taft, Taft Golf TV, coach for the Jack Nicholas Academy here in sunny and outrageously hot Orlando, Florida. Wanted to come to you today with a drill, about a week's follow up from my short game skills assessment with the, the first kind of series of drills that you can use at home to help you improve uh, your short game and also carry into your full swing. What I want to talk about today before I start talking about specific short game shots is how we can start to create a little bit better impact. Okay, if we're not striking the ball consistently, if we're not able to get the ball in the middle of the face, whether it's the putter or the driver, we're not going to be able to control our distances and we're not going to be able to control how where the ball is going as far as curvature um, as well as spin rates and all of those things that we like to talk about. So the very first part of what I want to talk about is one of the most important fundamentals that anybody can have in their golf swing. What I want to talk about today is getting a flat left wristed impact and I want to give you a series of drills of how you can start to build that into your golf swing from your putting stroke all the way up to your full swing and show you a really great way to work on it that doesn't take a whole lot of time or effort. Okay? What we want to start off with is here on the putting green. Okay? Even if we're not using a golf ball, we want to go ahead and set up one-handed with our left hand. Okay, When we take our right hand off the club, there's no way for our right hand to influence it. We want to see that the left wrist is flat. We don't want to see any cup in it, so you can see this bending. That would be incorrect. Not only are we adding loft to the face, but now our left wrist is in a weak position where our right hand might want to start to overtake it, which is a stroke that everybody knows as professionals, as teachers, um, you know, we're looking to fix, and all the best players in the game are putting with a relatively flat left wrist here. So to start with this, we're just going to go ahead and feel that position, take our right hand off the club, not even give ourselves the chance to influence our left hand, and make some normal putting motions. Okay, I have no target, I have no golf ball right now. All I want to do is feel that I'm maintaining that angle in my left wrist that I've started with and set up here. Okay, as you can see, I'm maintaining that angle all the way through my stroke. With a little bit of practice, you can do this too. Simply, to move on to the next part of this drill, most of you are going to want to putt with two hands on the club. So we want to get used to having the right hand on the club, but in a way that it's not going to start to add power influence the club face. In this case, it's the putter face, which is going to be responsible for about 95% of our starting line on all of our putts. Okay, what we're going to do is set up to this golf ball like we normally would, but what I want you to feel is go cross-handed. Okay, We're going to go cross-handed and get our left hand very low on the putter grip, leaving some part of the grip exposed up at the top here. Okay, From there, we're going to go ahead and take our right hand and up against the top of the club, we're going to grip it so that we force our left wrist to go flat. Okay, From that position, we'll go ahead and stroke a few putts. There, it's very difficult for me to want to get my right hand involved or to bend my left wrist. All I'm feeling is that I've maintained the angle that I've created at setup, and I'm holding it all the way through my putt. I don't want you to do this to a target because when you start trying to get target feedback or you know making putts or missing putts, people have a tendency to think, oh gosh, well it's my stroke. Not always the case. Um, it can be the case, but sometimes, you know, the conditions of the green, which a lot of people like to talk about from the U.S. Open, could have an influence on the factor. So when you're focusing on mechanics, we can't be worried about results. Go ahead and try and stroke a few putts like that. I'll be with you in a second for the second part of our video over in the bunker where I'm going to start to teach you how you can build this drill up into more of a full swing part of your game. But really focus, especially when you're on the putting green, when you're making your slow controlled controlled strokes, how a flat left wrist can better impact your game. For consistency, for strike, this is where we want to start. For the second part of our drill today on impact positions and creating a more consistent strike, I brought us here into the bunker. We, we just spent some time on the greens talking about the importance of a flat left wrist and how working in a putting stroke. Uh, and maintaining this flat left wrist can really help you start to create a better impact position, not only with your putts and striking it out of the middle, but striking it when you're making bigger swings into chips, pitches, and then on into your full swing. So before we really start talking about how to execute certain shots, it's really important that we understand exactly how we create this flat left wrist and get the feeling of working on it. So as I said, I brought us into the bunker here today. I want to go through some of the drills and kind of skills that you can use at home 
uh, with or without golf balls just to work on your impact position uh, building on the drill that we just went over on the putting green to give you kind of three steps to more consistent impact for this drill for the first part we're not even going to need a golf ball you'll just need a golf club and if you have one an alignment stick but just about anything that you can draw on the sand with is going to do uh, what I'm going to do to start is take my alignment stick and I'm just going to draw a line right across the sand just like that. Okay, so as you can see now we have a line here. Uh, if you really want to work on it, you can draw a couple of lines, one here, uh, and then you're not going to have to draw anymore and keep going and keep working through the bunker. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to draw one line, but typically when I will practice this drill myself, I'll draw about three lines. I'll, and then I'll go back and I'll redraw some lines and I'll actually go through it twice. So what I want to do is use this line as a simulated golf ball. Okay, I'm pretending that the golf ball is sitting on this line. Uh, again, stressing the same thing that we were stressing on the putting green, what I'm trying to work on here is maintaining a flat left wrist through impact. So I'm going to get a downward descending strike on the golf ball. I'm going to impact the ground and my divot should extend out from this line. So the way that I want to start this drill is by just making very, very small chipping type motions. They need to be small. They need to be slow. Um, when you first get out there, you're going to think, oh, there's no ball there. This is easy. The best thing that you can do is really, really slow down and, and make a small motion that you're very much in control of. So I take a normal grip, take my normal stance. Uh, I'm not too concerned with grounding the club because I'm only in the bunker here to work on this drill. But what I want to do is go ahead and address that line as if it were the golf ball. And I'm going to make a slow, small chipping motion just from here to here. Okay. And what I can do now is I can look at the divot that I've left in the bunker here and get some feedback from it. So my line started here. My divot started basically right on my line. And my divot has extended outward towards the target side, which is telling me that with that small, small slow stroke, that I've created the proper impact position of a flat left wrist. I haven't come into impact where I'm throwing it away on the right side. I haven't stood up where I've missed the ground. I haven't, you know, kind of thrown away all my lag and impacted the sand back here. I got that one pretty much right. So from there, I want to continue to use the same line and go through and make some of the same size strokes and continue to make those strokes as I work my way down the line. Now if your line is not perfectly straight, what you're going to start to notice is that your divots are not going to line up in a perfectly even line. Uh, as you saw, I just drew the line in the sand here with my alignment stick. What I was paying attention to though was my address position, making sure that the ball is in the middle of my stance, which is where it would be for the 8 iron that I'm using right now for this drill. Um, and all of my divots for the most part start, well they all start on the left side of the ball. I had one of them that started slightly further in front of the line that probably would have been a shot that's a little bit too thin. But without even hitting golf balls, I'm getting very good feedback from what my strikes would be like. And this is something that's very simple to do. It doesn't cost a lot of money. All it takes is your time and effort to set it up and really pay attention to what you're doing. What we want to make sure we do with this drill is that we pay full intention or have full intention to what we're trying to accomplish because it's very easy to kind of let our minds run wild when there's no golf ball there. There's no reaction or feedback from ball flight. But we also want to pay full attention to make sure that as we go through the drill, we're taking a consistent setup. We're really focusing on getting that left wrist out in front and staying flat. We're really trying to make sure that we're impacting on the line and taking a divot in front of it. So that was part one of our sand drill. For the next part of our drill, we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to continue to build. So we started on the putting green with working on a putting stroke, a very small stroke with a flat left wrist. Then we moved into the bunker and started to make more of a chipping type stroke making sure that we got our divots on the front side of the line that we drew in the sand, allowing us to kind of gauge our impact position and, you know, are we going to be able to strike the ball first on a consistent basis? Okay. The next level of this drill is to go ahead and draw your line in the sand again, but this time we're going to go ahead and make target lines as well. So basically with our line, what I'm doing is I'm making little plus signs as I go along here. 
Okay, so I've made some plus signs in the sand. Don't worry about stepping on the line. The only important part is kind of where the the parallel target lines and the perpendicular ball, simulated ball line line up are. Um, what I want to do now is get into making a little bit bigger swing. I'm going to make kind of a three-quarter type pitch swing. I'm still using an eight iron. I don't have any balls here. Balls are not important. The ball flight is not important. We're working on mechanics. Okay. When people start letting the ball flight dictate whether they're making a proper swing or not, that's where they start to get in trouble. As a lot of great players have said, a great swing can hit a horrible shot and a terrible swing can sometimes hit a great shot. Okay. So we want to really make sure that we're paying attention to what we're doing and that we're really attacking this drill with full intention. What I'm going to do this time is get set up the same way using the parallel or the, the line that's going through my legs as my simulated ball. And I'm going to set up with my club in the middle of one of those plus signs that I've drawn. What I'm going to do is go ahead and make about a three quarter pitching type swing. Okay. And what we're hoping to see is not only now that we've got our divot starting on the line that we originally drew for the first part of the sand drill, but now we want to see that the, the target line is actually going through the middle of that divot. Okay, What that's going to tell us is now not only are we catching the ball first, but we're catching the ball right out of the middle of the face. So we're going to go ahead and go through and, and work on those and hit some of the same type motions. And we could continue working down a line that way. Okay, so what I've just done there is I've simulated four shots. For each of those shots, the, my, uh, the, the simulated ball line is running right there. Each of my divots starts right on that line and extends forward from it. And as well, these lines that I have that are parallel to my target line or are representing my target line are right in the middle of my divots. So now I know that with some practice on the putting green and with some practice in the sand that I'm impacting the ball in the middle of the face with a flat left wrist getting ball first contact. In a second I'm going to show you the last step of this drill that will give you a much better chance to create a consistent impact when you get out on the golf course. It will help you in your short game and it will help you in your long okay, game. Okay, so we're back for the third part of our consistent impact drill, if you will. Obviously, this is all in one video, as you've seen, watching it straight through. But we've started from working with our cross-handed putt, putting some pressure, keeping a flat left wrist as we make a putting stroke. Into a line drill, we're making a very slow, small chipping stroke. Into a line drill where we've also added a target line that simulated where the ball is sitting for centeredness of contact. So not only are we now getting ball first, but we're hitting it in the middle of the face. The last thing that you can do to practice your impact position is really just to hit balls out of a fairway bunker. Okay, so I've got a couple range balls here, and what I really want to focus on is that I'm getting ball first contact, and that it's extending out kind of down my target line now that I've built my mechanics in the proper way. So important things about this, and hitting balls out of a fairway bunker, when you're doing this drill. Okay, we don't want to cheat the drill. We don't want to put the ball way back in our stance to try and make sure that we're getting a downward strike on the ball. Okay, we want to ensure that our mechanics have taken care of that. So by moving the ball back, I might be able to cheat a little bit. We're not going to do that. We're going to keep the ball right here in the middle of our stance where it should be with an 8-iron. We're going to go ahead and address it and make a nice, smooth, full swing taking the ball out of the bunker. So I'm going to continue hitting these last few balls for you, but go ahead and work on this drill. Work on getting your flat left wrist at impact. Work on creating a ball strike, then ground strike, getting ball first contact. Work on getting the ball out of the middle of the face, and I guarantee you this will help you with your game. Your short game, your chips will be much crisper. You'll create more spin. Your long game, you'll have more control of your distances, and you'll have more control of your ball flight. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.